This week, they came, they raced, they didn't move the needle. And this guy, well, he continues to show why he's a champ. And speaking of champs, Moto America crowned one. We have the highlights and we talk to him. Oh, let's not forget about this guy, e-bag number one of a possible three. We have that story. And a record falls in AMA Pro flat track, but it was hard fought. We have that and more only on the Racer X Show. Hello and thanks for checking out the Racer X Show. I'm Greg. MotoGP raced up Brno and the championship is all tied up. Plus, Ricky Carmichael versus Tim Ferry versus Kevin Windham. Yeah, we have that information. And your last chance to win a 450. We've got a lot to do, so let's go. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, Soul and Passion. And by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhausts. We're kicking things off with a motocross segment presented by a Cherubis, where it was expected that Red Bull KTM's Ryan Dungey would wrap up the national championship a race early. And it was also expected that we would have a clear favorite for the 250 championship once we left Miller Motorsports Park. Well, one out of two ain't bad. Here's Jason Wygant and Grant Langston with the story. Not far from the Great Salt Lake and the Bonneville Salt Flats. Speed of a different kind today. It's the next to last round of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing and the Zions Bank Utah National. Jeremy Martin gets caught up. You'll see him on the left side of your screen, your championship leader on the number one. Joey Savacci goes down, that ignites a pile up, and Martin is slowed drastically. He's about 30th on the first lap. And he'd be in comeback mode for the rest of this one. Marvin Muscan, the other rider battling for the title, he had to go from 11th. So he had was in a comeback situation as well. Here he passes RJ Hampshire for the lead. But we'll watch the 17 of Cooper Webb trying to follow him through. Webb wants to steal the moto win away from Muscan and help his teammate Martin gain some points. But Webb makes one mistake here, and it was costly. Got the bike buried in this uh, soft dirt in the inside. And that would allow Muscan to get away and go on take the moto win here's martin trying to do work he got him in the top 10 then he's moving up into the top five big crash for jesse nelson who luckily got up okay to finish 11th that would put martin into fourth final turn muscan is going to win the moto and that will be enough to give him the points lead he was down two by martin coming into this one you cannot believe what happened this is the last turn of the race that's that's Martin who's running fourth, and then watch the right side of the screen. Third place, RJ Hampshire crashes uh, about, what, 30 feet from the finish line? Maybe 50 feet, and there goes Martin uh, by to inherit third and gain two points. An absolute gift for the champion. And heartbreak for Hampshire. Man, that's a tough one. <laughs> what had his first podium finish in a moto. It was crazy. We had a start, and Jeremy Martin led, and there was a crash, so they red flag restarted it. Marvin Muscan took the lead the second time around, and Cooper Webb leaped by him to take the lead in 17. Yeah, Webb was on fire at the beginning of the race, and then it was Jeremy Martin's turn. This is huge for the points battle. You see Muscan makes a little mistake, does not get all the way over that jump, and Jeremy Martin goes the long way around, takes that position. So this makes things interesting, because now the points are basically tied, but... Jeremy Martin is not done there. Cooper Webb knows it's his teammate, has a look over, makes it very easy on him, but more importantly, stays between him and Muskin. But Martin takes the win and the overall. The points coming in, Muskin two down, they lead. He's two down, see that right there. Martin says, hey Webb, thanks man for making my life easy. Here it is, Martin and Muskan tied for the points today, but the tiebreaker is the second moto. Look at that, the way we came in, two points. And by the way, Savacci and Osborne, look at that little battle for third. There's probably some bonus money for the teams on the line for them, so they'll sh slug it out at our next race. Well, it looks like Christophe Porcel here on the white 377 was going to get the whole shot. He drifts just wide, and a classic wide-open charge by Justin Barsha nets him a whole shot again. But he had Ken Roxon right behind him. Roxon and Dungey battling for second and third, and then Roxon would go after Barsha for the number one spot. Yeah, Barsha had the lead, but it seemed like once a couple of the top guys got around him, 
never was able to rebound. There you see Roxon takes the lead, and he started stretching it out immediately. Dunchy has to get around. Roxon here for the lead, which he does late in the moto. And after that, Dunji would then start easing out the gap. Yep, he didn't need to win the moto to win the title, but every time he lines up, he wants to win. Good effort by uh, Roxon, but he'd end up finishing second. And that moto victory clinches the championship for Dunji. Here he results from this moto season best for Brock Tickle. Yeah, That's, good for him. Yeah. That's awesome to it, see. Absolutely. So the Soaring Eagle Jimmy John Suzuki team has to be happy. Second and third. Baggett fourth. Another Suzuki rider. Barsha fifth. Probably not going to be happy with that considering he led early. Anderson, Kennard, Grant, Porcel, and Wilson round out the top ten. Nicoletti gets the early lead. Right behind him is Roxon. Now Roxon. He knows the goal. Get around Nicoletti and try to get away from the field. He makes a quick pass here on the 46. And did open up at one point a four-second advantage over Dungy. Dungy, meanwhile, is dealing with Justin Barsha, who's gotten around Nicoletti for second. Makes the move on the 51. And you see Roxon not too far up ahead. And they went at it. About five laps of battling one little error from Roxon. It was what Dungy needed to finally seal him off. Gets on the right side of the track to the left and takes over the lead. And your rest of the second motor results. Barsha third, bag at a good charge from the back for fourth. Wilson fifth. Good sign for him coming back nice. from the knee injury. Yeah. Kennard, Tickle, Grant, Porcella, Nicoletti hangs on for a top 10. So that's your second moto results. Dungy's lead insurmountable, but uh, only a five point edge now for Barsha over Roxon. So they're going to slug it out for second at our final race one week from now in Indiana. Congratulations to Ryan Dungey and the Red Bull KTM team. His third Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. Only the great RC has more. That is something special. So now our focus turns to the 250 class. I witnessed what Jeremy Martin did in Moto1 with my own eyes. In the end, he only lost one and a half seconds after he picked up his bike and got going. He was 25 seconds down after lap one, 26 and a half when the race was over. That was getting through 35 racers. It was incredible. As for Marvin Muscan, well, he's up against it, folks. With the very fast Cooper Webb and a surging Aaron Plessinger in his corner, Jeremy Martin definitely has the upper hand, and Muscan knows that. When asked about it post-race, Muscan just looked off into the distance and said, poof, well, that's racing. But he did it with a French accent, you see. This one is going to be fun to watch, and this is how you do it. Saturday, catch Pro Moto live on MAV TV for the first motos, 1 p.m. East, and then on NBCSN, a slight delay for the second motos. 11.30 p.m. East is the start time. Come on, it's Saturday night. You can stay up and watch. I know you want to. Now on to the next crop of Ryan Dungey's and Ricky Carmichael. They come from the Rocky Mountain ATV MC AMA Amateur National Championship from Loretta Lynn's Ranch, presented by Amsoil. We call it Loretta's. And one class to keep an eye on for the next big names in the sport is 450A. So here are some highlights from this year's motos. Three motos over five days make up the national championship, and that is a great opportunity for racers to get it right or wrong. Last year in this class, Jesse Wentland won his second national 450A championship that got him the RSR Star Cycle Honda Pro Ride for this year. So someone's paying attention. Number 69 is Tristan Charbonneau. On the Honda, Charbonneau is no stranger to winning at Loretta's. Last year, he won both 250A and 450B titles. And when Moto One was over, he took the win ahead of some big names in the amateur rankings. Number 57, Darian Sinai. Number 19, Bradley Tapp. With Benny Bloss, fourth. With better gate picks for Moto Two, the favorites all lined up ready to go. Throw in 2014 450B limited champ 84 Lorenzo Lacrucio into the mix, and the usual suspects were in the hunt. But when the 20 minute moto was over, it was Nixon, Missouri's own Bradley Taft with the win. Charbonneau second, Sinai third, Lacrucio fourth, and Bloss in fifth spot. With Moto 3 underway, it initially looked like it would come down to Charbonneau, Taft, Sinai battle for the title. But disaster for Charbonneau when he had bike problems. He would DNF and slip all the way back to 14th in the overall. But from 8th in Moto 1 and 10th in Moto 2, it was number 87, Josh Osby on the KTM out front. The Valparaiso, Indiana rider would take the checkered flag first with a solid Moto 3 victory. Behind him came Taft, then Bloss. But we have to go to the results to see how it all panned out. The overall goes to Bradley Taft, his second national title. 3-1-2, the only rider to finish on the podium in every moto. 
Sinai sixth in Moto3 got him second overall. So you say you want a brand new 450? Well, here's your chance. Yep, you can pick up a Honda, Husqvarna, Kawasaki, KTM, Suzuki, or Yamaha. And all the proceeds go towards funding the Asterix Mobile Medical Center. How? Easy. Head to winna450.com and purchase all the raffle tickets your heart desires. But you gotta do it this week before August 21st. The winner is gonna be picked on Saturday the 22nd at the 2015 Bud Light Ironman National in Crawfordsville, Indiana. This is your last chance. The winner doesn't need to be present to claim the prize. So what are you waiting for right now? Go to winna450.com, get your raffle tickets, and help support the Asterix Mobile Medical Center today. And that is our motocross segment, brought to you by a chair beat. Okay, now it's time for our road race segment presented by Yoshimira. We turn our attention to the smaller displacement super sport class of Moto America. The class that feeds the superbike ranks and eventually World Superbike or Moto GP. Indianapolis Motor Speedway was the site for round eight of the Moto America Championship. The situation? If number two wheels in motion mean Yamaha's Josh Heron crashed out, the championship would go to number 95, Yamalub Yes Graves Yamaha's JD Beach. And after a lap 11 red flag with Heron leading the way, the restart would prove very different. With JD getting the whole shot and Heron behind, you could see Heron searching for rear end traction. And then, blammo, he goes down. He'd eventually be okay, put the chain back on the bike and finish 13th. With only six laps to complete in this race, it came down to these three. Beach, number 50 is Bobby Fong on the latest Triumph, Number 31, Garrett Gerloff, JD's teammate. JD would eventually let those guys go by, and for the win, a drag race to the yard of bricks as Gerloff holds off Fong for his second Moto America victory, and he's pumped. And close behind, also pumped your new national champion, JD Beach. Joe Roberts gets Cameron Peterson by about a tenth of a second to lock down fourth place, but it was JD's day. With the points telling the tale, only 50 available, and 57 in the can, it's all his. And now, welcome back to the show, Moto America Super Sport Champ, J.D. Beach. Hey, J.D., congratulations on the number one plate. Well deserved. Uh, it's a week later, man. Has it sunk in yet? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's really sunk in because I've been s staying busy. I mean, I got home Monday after Indy, and Hayden Gillum and I were already back on the back on the bicycles, and we're getting ready for a Peoria where we raced yesterday. So, so I mean, I I, I think it's probably going to be after the season once I can really enjoy it, just because we still have one more round to go, and I I'm a racer, and I still want to win more races. You said that you saw on your pit board only one time that Heron was out, but he rejoined. How nerve wracking was it the last couple of laps for you? Yeah, the last couple laps of Indy were, uh, it, it was probably the hardest laps I've ever had to ride. Not not like physically, but just mentally. It was, it was, it was hard. I mean, I I saw Heron was out just once and I kept looking. I, I, I never look back when I'm racing and I look back every single lap. And I was looking at the uh, score, the scoring tower on the front straightaway, and kept trying to find his name. And then when I crossed the finish line with the checkered, I like realized what just happened. And and I, I think what really made it sink, uh, sink in was I went through turn one, turn two, and I looked back, and uh, Hayden was cut across, like cut straight across the track, and was coming straight for me, and he was. Just he was pumped for me because he knows how much work I've done for this, and and I I, I think that was the moment I I finally realized that Heron didn't didn't get 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 enough points. And I finally wrapped up the title. Well, JD, dude, I'm so pumped for you. Congratulations on the Moto America Super Sport National Championship and a strong race at Peoria over the weekend. Thank you very much. All right, time for a MotoGP update from Bruno. This one was simple. Movie star Yamaha's Jorge Lorenzo dominated practice, qualifying, and the race. But what of his teammate championship points leader Valentino Rossi? He could only muster third place, and that does this, all tied up, but Lorenzo has more wins, making him the leader. Seven to go, and Lorenzo has momentum. This is so exciting. AMA Pro flat track time, the sharp end of dirt track racing. 
Now this weekend, it was the unique Peoria TT, a bit different than the rest because you throw in a right-hander and a jump and you've got something special. And at Peoria, Zanotti Racing's Henry Wiles is something special, winning 15 GNC1 races over time, 10 in a row. The question, can he do it again? Like he's done numerous times over the last decade, number 17 Wiles grabbed the whole shot. However, unlike many Peoria TTs in the past, this one had to be earned. Wiles was shadowed by a hard charging number one on the Montgomeryville Cycle Center Honda, Jared Mees. The two stars quickly gapped the field by more than 10 seconds. And this is how the last lap was called by Scotty Dubler and the king of Peoria, Chris Carr. One more lap to go. He's got some breathing room now. Mies is behind Mick Kirk is going into the final or the final lap. Can't even see Mies now. Wiles has set sail and has made it through the lappers in perfect time. Up next in front of him is actually Jake Johnson, who's running sixth place, ladies and gentlemen. What a race. Here he comes. 11 times in a row. This man has won this race. Put your hands together for 17. Hammer and Hank Wiles, ladies and gentlemen. How about J.D. Beach on a stock Yamaha YZF fourth place just off of his national championship? He rewarded himself with new tires for this race. That's using your championship bonus. But let's hear from Henry Wilde. Between the bike being awesome from the whole Zanotti team and my riding, uh, it, it just feels amazing. Wilde's victory propelled him to eighth in the Harley-Davidson GNC1 presented by Vance and Hines point standing, while Mee's second place finish helped him extend his lead to 29 over Brian Smith, who finished 11th. Round four of the Kenda Full Gas Sprint Enduro took to the southeast dirt of Rock Crusher Farm, and it was a chance for off-road superstar Caleb Russell to wrap up his first of three possible championships for 2015. How'd it go for the FMF KTM rider? Here we go to the video. A Euro-style wide-open form of Enduro is full gas, and Russell was the first to hit the two and a half mile cross test on Saturday morning, laying down a 5.46.5 test time. With his main rival, Daniel Milner, coming in just 2.5 seconds slower, seemingly setting the stage for a two-man duel, similar to round three just two weeks earlier. But in just the second test of the day, the Enduro test, Russell would open up a commanding lead over Milner after putting down a blistering 7.47.8 test time on the 3.7 mile woods loop. With a 14 second lead after just two tests, Russell could have ridden conservatively and not taken any chances, but he continued to push the pace throughout the day, winning all six tests and setting his fastest time in the last attempt at both tests of the day. With Milner out for the second day of racing, a podium position opened up. The battle would go between Russell Bobbitt, Lane Michael, and Ricky Russell for a second fastest of the day, while Caleb Russell would continue his dominance, winning every single test on the day. Bobbitt and Michael's test times were very close to the day, with Michael besting the FMF KTM rider on two of the three attempts at the cross test. Russell finally back to his winning ways after his last two events where he finished second, and he doesn't like that. Russell Bobbitt 124 behind in second place. With the final round November 14th and 15th, Caleb Russell has the championship wrapped up with 80 points in hand. Congratulations, KR. Hey, get out of the house and get to a race. You can't miss the season finale of Pro Motocross in Crawfordsville, Indiana this week, and the 250 title is up in the air. Also at Ironman, the Legends race, Ricky Carmichael against Tim Ferry, Guy Cooper, and more, and round eight of the WMX series. Yeah, only two points between Marissa Markelin and Kylie Fosnock. And in the Kenda National Enduro Series, it invades Moorestown, Michigan. And finally on the calendar, Scramble Cross from Askey Ranch in Texas. Go race that one. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, Soul, and Passion. And by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. Okay, we're wrapping things up today. We hope you enjoyed the show. It's gonna be a crazy Saturday at Ironman, and I hope you can get there, and I hope you win that 450 as well. All right, if you're interested, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Greg White, that's pretty easy. And I'll be going to a Moto America race, maybe Supermoto, GNCC, and I'll be periscoping while I'm at all these things, so you wanna follow me there. Well, for the fine crew here at the Racer X Show and Racer TV, thanks for watching. Remember to keep it locked on racertv.com because we are all racing all the time.